Hey folks, welcome back. Chris Garlock with Michael Redman, our latest AlphaGo versus the world as we're working our way through all 60, that's right, all 60 of these amazing games. Uh, we're having fun with them. I hope you're having fun watching them. And Michael, I do believe we have a new player or a new victim, as I like to say. Who's, <laughs> who's our player? Uh, Yoon Chang, he is a Korean player, uh, six ton. Uh, I think now he's a seven, uh, eight ton, excuse me. An eight ton now, but at the time of the game, he was a six ton. Uh -huh. He was born in Seoul, Korea in 1990. And he was a throw in 2006. So he's, in, he's still in his 20s at the time of this game. And he liked territory. He was one of the players who would like play a lot of three, four points and stuff like that. And he was one of the players, I think he was maybe a player who really liked the three, three point invasions because I, I saw him playing it quite soon after Alpha Go, after this series. So he was one of the players, he still likes territory, I guess. But, so he was picking up on um, those parts of AlphaGo after this also. All right. And in this game, AlphaGo is going to um, try out the Avalanche Joseki. Oh, all right. right. So it's it's going to be something a bit unusual. Actually, this is a variation of the Avalanche Joseki that um, I studied with this game. I mean, it was it's a common... Uh, variation, but I, I figured that I could try it out too, and so I was playing a similar opening in some of my games also, uh, with some success. Okay. So I can talk about that during the game too. That'll be great. In this game, you see that Master or AlphaGo is playing three four points. So it's it, you can see it has Black is playing three four points. This is a slight difference. It's not like it in other games. It was playing a star point and then playing a three four point. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So see that it's doing different things, and it plays large tomorrow. So that's what I like about this series. AlphaGo is allowed to play various openings. It's not confined to just the one. And white plays a Kakari, black plays a... This is quite standard up to this point. And this is a point where nowadays you would still see people doing this kind of thing, maybe. Um, this would be perfectly normal. Actually, it's probably more popular for white to play the low Kakari now, uh, when black has the low Shimari and upper mm -hmm. right corner. It's just, it's a very subtle difference. But I think when black has a large Shimari on the fourth line, like at the mark point, then it's more likely for white to be playing the high, high Kakari. And when black has a low Shimari, as in this game, maybe it's a bit more common for white to play the low Kakari. Um, but it would be very difficult for me to explain to you why that is in logical terms, it's sort of like it's just something that's, that's been working for us, um, but I, we don't really know, um, we can't spell it out. So black plays here. Um, it's, 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 a good, no. it's good job security for us, Michael, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and white goes for the, the nadare. And so people really don't like this joseki because it's so complicated. And so I'm gonna point out here, although AlphaGo chose the honey here, and this is actually because the latter favors black. Black's, um, uh, it, you look at the upper left corner here, when white has this three, four point, there's a ladder that is very important in this joseki that is going to favor black. So you can't just go ahead and do the same thing if white has a star point there at the mark point. It's gonna be a different thing altogether. Uh, so this is an important point that you have to remember. And so f for people who just say, I don't want to get into that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to suggest that it's okay. That's, that's me. That's the one I play. That's the easy one. No, no ladders to worry about. And uh, actually, I talk about this in one of my videos about the um, a basic Joseki video, where I talk about this attachment that Black has played here on the third line. This, so this is a basic Joseki. If Black plays this way, um, you can keep it very simple, and you can keep your computer program happy with you too because it gets a good score, and there's nothing wrong with it. Black can slide here um, using a tempo and aiming at attacking the white group on the outside next. Uh, this white group is not so strong. Of course, the black group is 100% alive, and there is a later on black can, black will probably start with a move on the side somewhere around here and be looking to play the key point here later. And so that's one way black can do it. It's a, it's a decent amount of points, too. It's just not a, a tiny a, corner. It's a 15-point cor corner. When yeah. Black plays this attachment here, um, when Black plays this attachment here, 
in almost all of the variations, if black keeps it simple, black's going to get something like 15 points. That's why people play this. Black's getting a, a visible advantage um, for playing the cornerstone. So the local advantage is translated into a, about 15 points. Uh, so that's why people like to play this move, because it's so easy to understand that black has gotten something out of playing the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm going to suggest this. Also, um, if you want to get sente, it's also possible to just throw once more and play away because mm -hmm. the point will be completely alive even if white covers here. But in a position like this, when the the right side is still pretty much open, I, I would feel happy to play here. And later on in the game, even playing this move, uh, jumping up to the fourth line would be a, an effective move for black to start surrounding the, the right side, maybe in the middle game, later in the game. So that's that's the solution for people who don't want to get into the avalanche because it is a joseki that is fairly complicated. Uh, this is less complicated than the the large avalanche is this one that gets that's um, like there was a period in time where we were getting a new variation for this every few months, and that's when we were not using computer programs. Like if we did the same thing now, we would be getting a new variation every two or three days, something like that. Wow. And it was hard to say which was the best variation because they were all very complicated and very even, and they filled up about a quarter of the board. So it's probably pretty challenging for most amateur players to follow with that. Challenging for me too. Uh -huh. So that's why I'm saying this move is perfectly okay. And it gives you a good score. That's what's that's important too. So black plays the, the small Nadara. This is relatively easy when you compare it with the big Nadara, but it still does have a lot of dangerous variations. Um, the ladder I was talking about. Finally, we get to the ladder when white extends here and black plays here and white cuts. There's this ladder, which will favor white if the upper left corner is here. But in this case, it's going to favor black. The ladder is just going to go right left of that white stone and hit the edge of the board. Oh, that wasn't a very good diagonal. It's, <laughs> it's going to dodge that white stone. <laughs> <laughs> Not so good, but uh, you get the idea, right? Um, okay. <laughs> but if that white stone was at the we start, get the idea. you get the idea. If the white stone was at the start point, yeah. it, it would be good for white. Um, I mean, you, should, you should draw a ladder with your, you know, that kind of bends around. And <laughs> The yeah, other like, you remember how Nakayama, you remember Nakayama sensei, he made these great problems. And a lot of his problems, his wonderful problems, they would involve ladders that went all kinds of interesting places, if you remember. Well, his famous, he started that with his famous problem that was the heart. Yes, he, I was just thinking he, that. He had a program that draws a, uh, a problem that draws a heart. Yeah. And then, you know, as the years passed, he improved it and improved it to use the, the fewest possible number of stones. Oh. Uh, and he developed that into an art that was, people tried to emulate that, and it was impossible to do it as efficiently as he did. No, no, no. He was, I remember, he was so pleased with them. I think that's, uh, that's the cover of the Treasure Chest Enigma, actually, is that exactly. problem. It was yeah. his favorite problem. Yeah, and well. He proved, and he made other problems that were similar in that they involved ladders that just go around and around the board. He had this, this um, he had a little algorithm there where he had a few stones on the side of the board that would just, reflect the ladder into some different direction. You're wonderful. Cool. Uh, just to show you the Tessuji in the corner here, Black wins the, um, wins the semi in this case. And so this would be another way for White to fail. So in this case, White cannot extend at the third line here. White has to play the hanging connection. And Black plays here. The, there was a Joseki where Black played here. and Yeah, uh, I remember this one too, yeah. This is probably okay for white. You have to remember it started out as a black cornerstone, uh -huh. and white is the one who's getting territory here. So I think I like this Joseki for white. Um, so black plays here. This is going to start a fight on the side. And uh, black did play around with the order of moves here just a little bit, but it turns out um, it's okay for black to crawl first and then extend. The other order of moves. There are very minor issues with both both ways of playing it, but it's nothing really to worry about. And we get to this, almost always we're gonna to get to this point. And it turns out, this is good for black. 
And we didn't know it at the time. In fact, we didn't know it for a while until we had computer programs that gave us winning percentages. And for instance, Katago is giving back a 56% winning percentage, which is a few points better than the starting position. Like Katago gives black at six and a half point Komi, Katago gives black something like 52, 53%. Mm. Um, and so black's winning percentage has gone up a little bit, probably winning by one, one, point, one or two points. <laughs> but what I found to be really interesting is that with this move, um, this is the one move that computer programs definitely do not like. <laughs> this is the move we've been playing for decades. And for a while, we were still playing it after this. Huh. And this is the one move that computer programs do not like. Like Leela Zero doesn't like it. Katago doesn't like it. Wow. And they won. sometimes they will suggest this way. Okay. Um, this way, black gets. Uh, this was actually an option. Black white sacrifices the two stones, or if white extends here, black will play here. So this was one way to play. It looks okay for black to me. Another move that I found really interesting is that um, this was suggested, uh, and I think this uh, is probably uh, an, even fight, an even fight, um, where, um, for instance, something like this could happen. Maybe a peep. And it branches out like there's a lot of variations that are like a tenth of a percentage point different from each other. And so you just let the program um, work on it and it changes gradually. So I can connect here or cover on the second line. I, I sort of like covering on the second line just because white can peep here later, later and take away most of the corner territory. So this reduces the corner territory to something like less than 10 points. So it's a pretty big move as far as territory and white's potential eyes on the side. Mm. Um, but it gets very complicated. There's a number of possible variations stemming from this. I found it very interesting that this was the suggested move um, by both Katago and, and Lila. And it's something that I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to change with as the networks are um, updated, mm. because it did change before. And so it's something that seems a bit fluid, but I'll say it again. This is the one move that is pretty wow. constant, given a bad score. So already it's 58% for black, more like 10 points on the board. And surprisingly enough, AlphaGo does not continue in the exact same board position. In the exact same board position, I immediately ran out here. Right. This is the Joseki move. AlphaGo leaves it for a bit. I played this. I played this move in exactly the same board position, so I, I have a very strong memory of that. Um, and white plays here. This is a surprising move. I would rather play a kind of a pincer. Um, I guess a modern player would be thinking of playing moves like this, or maybe like this. People don't pincer so much anymore, but I would. I would be thinking of playing a pincer somewhere around here. Maybe that might be interesting, um, or a pincer here. Uh, there's some complicated variations when stuff like this happens, which could work in this board position. Mm -hmm. But like, I, I could go about talk. I, I could talk about that for the whole day, and I'd confuse everyone, including myself. So I'm, I'll, <laughs> I'll just go ahead with the board position for a bit. And now black moves out, taking a de decisive advantage. Like at this point, uh -huh. um, actually, the computer program was suggesting. Katago was suggesting white maybe should just extend here, but that would make it so easy for black. Black would be playing something like this. Um, so for a human player, this seems to be easier to understand. It seems easier to see that black has an advantage here for me, just looking at this. It seems fairly easy. Like if white, if white plays a two space extension, white is still a bit confined there and we'll have to add another stone there on the right side to make a living shape. Mm -hmm. For instance, if black gets an opportunity to play here, then white will not have enough room to have a local life. So that's a problem for white. Black is going to be playing that immediately. White really wants to make use of curling around here as a forcing move. But the problem with that is that black has this forcing move here, and it means that black will be able to um, take out this stone, which is a bit painful also. Yeah. So something like this could happen. This is okay for black. Even though white did get 
Um, it was significant that white got that three space extension, but black's getting something back in the center of the board. So it's, it is, um, it's less clear to me that black has an advantage here, but just studying this game, I remember that I was quite convinced. So I did have one game that had this exact, um, there's probably two games that I did for AGA actually, um, the YouTube channel for AGA. And one of them was almost exactly like this game. And I was black and I did very well. And that was because I'd seen this game. I decided this game, I thought it was going to work. A fairly similar board position, or at least the, the corner position is exactly the same. Uh -huh. And there was another game against Kuwabara, which I think there's, there's probably a video of that on your t YouTube channel, um, where my opponent took me, me by surprise and played a completely different variation. Um, and it was a more exciting game. But Black just plays the one honey here. Again, I would be expecting black to push once on the, I don't, I guess this is the seventh line. Uh, pushing once here was, would be normal, but AlphaGo is playing the lower side first. At this point, AlphaGo is saying that black just has this huge advantage, something like 66%, uh, well over 10 points on the board, something like 13, 14 points on the board already. But you can you can you can see that though, right? I mean, you know, he's got that huge corner. All, all the other stones are working. Uh, it's the fact that this group is just pretty strong. With that, yeah. that there's that point which is going to be an eye here. Um, White black has that eye that black can make at any point, and the fact that black has all these forcing moves on the, although it's the seventh line, black has all these forcing moves, and the fact that this shimari, the corner enclosure in the upper right corner is taking away most of the value of white's potential thickness. Oh, sorry. I probably should have done that but, with the- But isn't part of the problem, Michael, that once again, and I'm, I'm trying to see some patterns here with these with these players, is that, you know, once again, you've got, you know, white has got these two groups. They're not gonna die, but they're not gonna do anything. They're not gonna make, they're not gonna attack anything. They're not gonna make territory. They're, they're just gonna live. Right. And it's just the blacks group in the center is significantly stronger than White's group on the lower side. Uh -huh. And White's wall on the on the right side, you you might notice that the side's open. So it's it's not going to mount so much either. So it's just that black is just controlling so much more of the board area. Like every side you look at, you see some black stones sort of controlling it, like all, all over the place. It's it's hard to find white. The only area white is controlling is this area in the lower left. Right, right. And that happened without white doing anything that really looked that bad. Yeah, it was kind of a natural sequence there, and AlphaGo is just one step ahead of white every time, mm. and that sort of adds up to make a very a significant difference. Wow, that's a beautiful. I, I, it's really you know I. I I see why you love this series. You know, it's 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 really you know you do, and it's and the, and the game is and the name is so appropriate, master, because you really are watching a master and getting to see him against all these different players. Uh, and this is partly because we've been doing a lot of the AlphaGo versus AlphaGo, uh, which is you know just a whole other thing. But seeing all these different styles, all these different folks, you know, trying all these different things, and uh, really fascinating. Good, uh, great. Okay, well, thank you, Michael. Thank you all for watching. Hope uh, if you're enjoying them half as much as we are, then you know, be <laughs> doing pretty well. Uh, stay tuned, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.